You've listened to him. You've heard him talk. He's got a couple more things to say. I'm running out of things, but I'm going to tell you one thing. In a Donald Trump administration, there will be no bullshit. Thank you very much. <laughs> well, Tom Brokaw, that's uh, Bobby Knight for you. That's our guy. That's Michigan. That's Michigan. That is our he, guy. He takes his coaching cell right to the political <laughs> arena. Yeah, he did. Also they with didn't us, there, right. did he MSNBC know. anchor and political correspondent Steve Kornacki. Okay, you're going to have to help us out here. And in Philadelphia, former chairman of the Democratic National Committee and former governor of Pennsylvania and NBC News political analyst, Ed Rendell. Tom Brokaw. Tom. In case of emergency. Talk to us. I break a glass and I ask you to come on set and I will tell you why. <laughs> This weekend, everybody's hair was on fire. Last week, everybody's hair's on fire. The race is over. This person's going to win. That person's going to lose. Da 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 da. I always go back when everybody's freaking out and saying, How dare you say this race is still on? Say, I'm reminded of the entire political world, and I mean the entire political world, declaring the Tuesday morning of the New Hampshire primary in 2008 that the race was over, that Hillary Clinton was down double digits in polls, and Tom Brokaw said, I got an idea. Why don't we let the people vote? Oh, fancy that. How radical, Tom. And, and, and what yet, happened? The more pundits there are, the more pollsters there are, the more predictions there are, the more people are saying, two weeks out, your vote doesn't matter. The race is over. Well, the commentariat, which I've been listening to for the last four or five days, as I have been traveling around the country, been in the Midwest, I've been on the West Coast, I was in Rocky Mountain states, I was in Baltimore over the weekend. There is not nearly that kind of breathless excitement about what's likely to happen. People are still taking the measure of it all. There's not a lot of enthusiasm once you get past the inner circle of the two candidates, if that, for that matter. So I think the real issue for both campaigns, and especially I think for the Hillary campaign, is they have an amazing get out the vote apparatus. We know that. That's right. Cool. Romney found that out four years, uh, four years ago. I mean, they were stunned on the Republican side about how they absolutely got blindsided by David Puff and the get out the vote. So you have to keep that in mind. We're all talking, uh, obviously, about Comey and making his decision and whether he did the right thing or the wrong thing. In the Wall Street Journal today, two of the principal yes. op ed columnists have said Red. resign or he did the wrong yeah. thing. I think that goes by in terms of having an impact on the election itself. I think the big, big issue is whether Mrs. Clinton can pull millennials into her side. I saw one of them yesterday. She said, I was a Bernie Sanders guy. I guess I'll go for Hillary. Right. There's not a lot of enthusiasm. The excitement that we all felt as we were growing up about Kennedy versus Nixon or about Bill Clinton coming online, Ronald Reagan coming online, people got ginned up about all of that. In this case, everyone's backing into the Getting voting gin booth. Getting down. You know, yeah. backing <laughs> in. Yeah, Ed Rendell, I, you, I heard your interview this weekend. I thought it was fascinating. Well, all of Clinton's supporters uh, in the commentariat are all saying, this race is over, this race is over. You, you gave a great warning, which was, hey, it's not over until people vote. And you brought up uh, the late, great Frank Rizzo. <laughs> and said, said you never know uh, if there aren't going to be some undervotes for Trump. Can you explain that? Well, in Philadelphia, whenever Frank Rizzo ran for office, he always polled about three or four points less than he'd got on election day because there were people, because of Rizzo's flamboyance, his sort of racial overtones, there were people who were afraid to admit, even to a stranger on the other end of the line, that they were voting for him and would vote for him in the booth. And the question remains, is there that sort of Trump uh, undervote, uh, the hidden mm -hmm. Trump vote? Uh, there may be, and it's something we've got to be wary about. I think Tom is right, though. It's counterbalanced by the turnout operation. There is no turnout operation that you can see for the Trump people in Pennsylvania. There is an incredible turnout operation in, in, in this state. We have the Clinton people have 300 paid staffers, a great uh, lo local state campaign manager, and uh, I think that those two will cancel each other out. If I had to pick an advantage, I'd pick a slight advantage for the Clinton turnout operation. Uh, I think people are going to the polls. This has been such a, a, a riveting election in terms of voter attention that I think people are going to go to the polls. And I think a lot of Democrats are dogged 
one in their admiration for Hillary, but two in their determination not to let Donald yeah. Trump be and president. Yeah, let's look at some of the state so, uh, polls that, if we could, in New Hampshire, there's an eight-point swing toward Trump in the WMUR University of New Hampshire poll taken Wednesday through Sunday Clinton is down to 46 percent Trump climbing to 39 percent with a week to close at a uh, seven point gap in pretty important state for him in Indiana Trump has rebounded to a significant lead in the Monmouth University poll ahead by 11 points 50 percent to Clinton's 39 percent in a poll conducted Thursday through Sunday and Trump is headed to Pennsylvania today where the new Franklin and Marshall poll puts Clinton up by 11 points, 49 percent to Trump's 38, a poll that was taken mostly after the Comey announcement. So Steve Kornacki, um, we had just been saying this morning we hadn't seen any polls suggesting a big swing in Donald Trump's favor uh, since Friday, and then we showed an ABC News tracking poll out this morning that shows Trump up plus one. Our own poll, uh, the NBC News survey monkey poll, has Trump down six. This one has Trump plus one. What's your take? So if you look inside the numbers, it kind of gets to, to what Tom was just saying about this question about enthusiasm or lack thereof. And it looks like what happened in this ABC News Washington Post tracking poll where Trump is now ahead by one point is the percentage of voters, they measure the, the sort of pool that they use based on enthusiasm. How likely are you to turn out and actually vote? So they're asking the question, how enthusiastic are you about voting for Donald Trump? How enthusiastic are you about voting for Hillary Clinton? Now, neither one of them is getting a good score here. Four years ago, the number was in the 60s for both candidates. It's 53 for Trump in this poll, but it's 48 for Hillary Clinton. So what's happened here, and maybe it is connected to the Comey news, maybe it is connected to the email news, maybe it's something else, but what's happened is that enthusiasm number for Clinton, at least in this one poll, has dropped below the enthusiasm number for Donald Trump. They're both low to begin with. Clinton's has gotten lower, and so what that seems to be doing is creating a result now where the pollster's looking at it and saying, oh, the Trump people are a little bit more likely to come out and vote next week. Advantage Donald so they're Trump. waving it that way. It goes to Tom's point that people are backing into the voting booth. Tom, do you look at what's happening right now with the email and Comey and all that? If Hillary Clinton is investigated, where we're left as a country after this election, for all the ugliness of the last year and a half, with, could this be hanging over a, a president's head through the first hundred days, first one, two years of her administration if she wins? I think it's a huge issue. I'm, I've been saying from the beginning that the biggest issue in this country is how you put it back together again yeah. after the election. doesn't mean it's kumbaya, but we've got to have some common goals that everyone can agree on. And the red state senators are going to come in and they're going to get into the bunker and they're going to say we're not going to go along with her. And if Trump closes to being within reach of her and it does become a close election, I think that that will be only exaggerated. I think right now the only thing that the Democrats and Comey can agree on is that if he wants to send Anthony Weiner to Gitmo, I think the Democrats would say that's a good idea. <laughs> right. right. That's not a bad idea. Yeah. Let's get him out of here. I mean, I can't believe we, that this we guy drive him has down. been a player yeah, you're, as long as he has been. You would drive you know. him Actually, down, Ed Rendell? Is that what you said? Absolutely. And I haven't, <laughs> and I haven't driven a car in 22 years. I'd get in and drive him down. Ed, Ed really quickly, uh, the, the criticism of Comey, uh, how, how do you feel about it? Where do you stand on it? I think he had to do what he had to do because of the leaks, but what he didn't do and what he should have done, he, he should have put a sentence in that letter that says, look, we haven't had a chance to review these emails. No one should infer anything from this action other than we're doing our job. Isn't there a Wait, well, hold on. I, I, I just, just stop for one second. I don't think he should have done even Can't that. Have, I, 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 no, I, just, I just want to say, Ed Rendell, I, I think... I, I think it's it's telling you to say that. Tom doesn't think he, he should have even done well, that. Well, I think it's I fine think for him to, I want to make it clear that if he had an investigation underway, fine. But the way the FBI operates is if we go do our investigation, right. we'll talk to you when we have something right. to report back to you. But Ed, but Ed though, but Tom, I as, think as, a D, as a DA, though, I, I, I'm just saying it sounds to me like you've actually split the baby the best way it could be split, which is you know the leaks are coming, you know it's going to come out, and if you're a DA worried about your office, worried about your backside, then you maybe you do put a statement out, but with the clarifying language that was not there. I, I, I would even go so far as to say anyone who assumes that this suggests guilt or uh, it, you know, any additional data is, is making a faulty assumption. Something along that line, clarifying language, we won't know ourselves if there's any significance of this until we investigate. Go ahead. And that investigation is going to take months. That's exactly what he should have done. But, uh, but, Tom, but, you, you but, said but wait, hold on. The initial summation that he made about her was very clear. 
about how he felt about different actions that were right. studied in their investigation. So why are we assuming he should have done that and, and somehow failed to do something? Maybe he didn't want to do that for no, no, a reason. But, I mean, you the, have, the, why are we judging? But the fact of the matter is that the FBI is an investigative agency. Correct. It is not a public commentary agency. All the FBI directors in the past have gone ahead and conducted their investigations out of the sight of the press and the political interest that they may have felt that the country had until they had something that they could come up with and say, we now can recommend to the Justice Department in our dialogue with them about what should be done, and then it's up to the Justice Department to make a decision about whether or not they're going to go forward with it. I, I, he has been all over the map on this stuff, and it's quite surprising to me because of the way he came in. He was yeah. a tower of integrity. Now he's been back and forth and all over the map. Now, uh, yeah. now I don't think anybody's suggesting he's not a tower of integrity now. No, I, you know, well, look, when he gets beat up by the Wall Street Journal and others, and he got, look, he got caught in, the, in the, what's going right. on in Washington. Everybody feels that they've got to say something one time after another. And what worries me all across the board in this election is damage done to institutions. That's right. And we don't want people to have a continuing suspicion about the integrity of the FBI or the Justice right. Department. So, Ed Rindell. Uh, it seems to me that you're in a perfect position to talk about this, not because I agree with what you're saying, but because you have <laughs> been on the prosecutor side and you've been on the politician side. And you understand, and if you could explain for everybody, yeah, what Comey is dealing with here uh, in that he, he has got an FBI that is at war with... Uh, McCabe and he's got an FBI that is at war with the Justice Department and he's got people inside his office that are leaking to the Wall Street Journal about how the Justice Department has has obstructed an investigation of the Clinton Foundation and he's got people working in professionals working in there that are about to go crazy over this latest find so talk about all of that like this isn't a normal situation for Jim Comey. He finds himself in an extraordinary situation and he is balancing a lot of things, including the integrity of the FBI. And does it get spilled out all over the front pages of the Wall Street Journal uh, before or after the election? Yeah, I think you're right, Joe. As a prosecutor, generally I would agree with Tom that there's no place. We never released anything having to do with an ongoing investigation for someone running for office within two months of the election itself. But Comey knew that there were going to be leaks. So if he let the leaks occur, then not only would the FBI be hurt, but I think Hillary Clinton might have been hurt worse because it might have looked like there was an attempted cover-up. What I would have done again is something along the lines of what you or I just said. Get ahead of the leaks, release the information, but say no one's to take any inference from this. We haven't reviewed them. It's going to take months to review them. If you draw conclusions, you may be wrong. These, not be, these may not be pertinent to the investigation. They may be duplicates for what we already have. That's what we have to find out. So no inference is drawn here. Final word, Tom. <laughs> Well, final word is not so much about this, but what I've been going around the country and hearing a lot of people who want to write in a vote. And then a friend of mine in South Dakota, Republican, he doesn't like either one of the candidates. I said, write in somebody. He said to me the next day, it's illegal in South Dakota to write in. Mm -hmm. You'd be stunned by the number of states that it is illegal to write in your choice for president. That's one more wow. manifestation mm -hmm. about how the system wow. has got to be changed yeah. and reformed in some fashion. You're denied your illegal. right. Illegal. It is illegal. I hope it's not illegal in Connecticut. Well, I'm in trouble. Fact is, I don't know about Connecticut. I'm going to write in Tom Brokaw. But, yeah. the, but the Supreme Court ruled in 81 that in fact you could deny people the right to write in a vote for president of the United States and the states then are able to exercise that this is a federal election this is a, for the presidency of the United States and so secretaries of state and however large or small a state can make a decision I'm going to deny you your right of choice I think that's one more example of how we've got to clean up the system yeah. and make it more transparent and make people have a greater confidence in it Tom okay, and a preach. Oh, I oh, love it. And Rendell, Steve Kornacki, thank you all. Thank Coming. You. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.